About 80% of businesses fail within their first year of operation, and another 50% of the remaining ones fail after 5 years. So what is the difference between the ones that fail and the ones that succeed? If you are a baker, a hairdresser or a developer, you might think, why work for someone else when you can work for yourself? So you start your own business doing the things you're good at. And gradually, in time, you learn new things along the way, from bookkeeping and people management to selling your products or services. At first, things go well. Happy customers promote your business and the demand is growing. At this point, you decide to hire some help. After some time, you get your first unhappy customer. And as the time goes on, more issues come to the light. At this point, you start feeling like you can't trust anyone else to do the job right. So, you go back to doing everything by yourself, working 14 hours a day to keep the business running. What started as a dream job working for yourself turns into the worst job you can imagine. There are three phases of a business's growth. Infancy, adolescence and maturity. And maturity is not an inevitable result of the first two phases. Most successful companies like McDonald's, Federal Express, IBM, they did not end up as mature companies. They started out that way. They also went through infancy and adolescence, but they did it in an entirely different way. They started out with a clear vision of how their businesses would look like when they are finally done. And from there they thought how the businesses would have to act. The last step was realizing that unless they start acting that way right from the beginning, they will never get there. If you want to create a great company, you have to act like a great company long before you become one. So how do we start a business as a mature company? First of all, think of how do you want your life to look like and what would be the role of your business in it. This would be your primary aim. Once you have a picture of how you want your life to be, you need a clear statement of what your business has to do for you to achieve your primary aim. More precisely, you need to plan what it has to bring in terms of money. But how can you know how much money the company will make in the future? You don't. But without making a plan, how do you know that you will be able to achieve your primary aim? This will help you understand if your business idea is worth pursuing. After you found a business idea worth pursuing, you need to build an organization chart. In a company where everyone is doing everything, no one is accountable for anything. That's why it's important to organize your company around functions rather than on personalities. By filling in the person responsible for each position, you also describe the work that has to be done. And some of it has to be done right away, like research about potential buyers, competition and much more. Instead of having a business dependent on highly skilled people, it's better to build a management system that will ensure the same results every time. The best example is McDonald's. They have clear rules of how everything has to be done, and they are so good that you can't tell if the person who did the burger works there for one month or ten years. I learned this and much more from the book called The Emi Free Visited, and if you don't like reading, consider watching this video.